Welcome back Meet Militia. Today it's all about dry age. We're gonna find out is it worth it? It's time to cook so fall in. So the star of the show today is going to be this 38 day dry aged New York strip loin. Uh, what I did is use the Umai dry age uh, bag and dry aged this in my home refrigerator. I cut the loin in half and the other half I cut into steaks, seasoned and put them in the freezer and right now they're in the sous vide uh, cooking up at 129. I'm going to trim up the dry age and reverse sear them on the Weber kettle then I'll bring out the steaks from the sous vide and we'll sear them all together try them side by side and see if that dry age is worth it as a side dish we're gonna do some bacon fried squash now I've done a bacon fried corn on the Blackstone before but I was watching Todd Tobin this morning and he did a side dish uh, pretty much the same concept with bacon fried summer squash and baby zucchini. So for that, we've just got some cut up yellow summer squash and zucchini. I've got some red, yellow, and green bell pepper, as well as some diced sweet yellow onion, and about a half a pound of bacon. We're gonna get the bacon going on the Blackstone, get that rendering down, pull out some of that oil that we need, put this all together and get that going. And while that's cooking, That'll give me a chance to trim up and cut the New Yorks into steaks, and we'll go to that point. So again, I've had this uh, New York strip loin, uh, half of one, uh, in the Umai uh, home dry age bag for 38 days. Now I'm just gonna peel this open. And let's see how this looks. If you haven't done dry age at home, um, the first thing that I would say is trust your senses. Your nose especially, but also your eyes. I like to inspect it. And this one looks super, super clean. There's no mold. There's no funny discoloration. The pellicle is absolutely beautiful. And almost no smell. If there is a smell, I would describe it as somewhere in between fresh baked bread and maybe a little bit of that smell that you get when you walk into a deli. Um, almost a spice kind of a smell. So it smells clean, it smells good. Um, you can tell that we've lost quite a bit of moisture out of it. I'm just going to go ahead and take the ends off, cut it into steaks about an inch and a half thick or so and then once the steaks are cut I'll trim the rest of the pellicle off so let's start from there so to start with we're just gonna clean up the end I'm just gonna square that off and take that off very kind of a waxy there's that beautiful dark red uh, color the fat marbling really starts to be pronounced and just by touching it the fat um, has more of a uh, more of a almost a wagyu kind of a feel more of a waxy kind of a feel um, you know I've watched dozens of videos on dry age I did a dry age brisket 
Um, I've done dry age New Yorks before. Everyone says save your pellicle. Uh, you can grind it into hamburger, you can uh, render it into, um, into dry age beef tallow. I've done the beef tallow, I've not done the burgers. Uh, to be honest with you, in my opinion, if it was worth eating, I'd leave it on the steak. So I don't save it. If you want to, go right ahead. I've used dry aged beef tallow on burgers. It doesn't, for me, give me the added flavor that I was looking for. So I don't save it. I'm just gonna be honest with you. If you want to save it, if you want to make tallow, if you want to grind it into burger, be my guest, I throw it away. And like I said, I'm gonna cut these into inch and a half to two inch steaks and then I'll do a final trim uh, once I get that done. That's a beauty. I'm gonna get more steaks out of this than I'd anticipated. That's good. Well, maybe not. I was thinking I was gonna get three, maybe four. I think that's exactly what I'm gonna get. A good, sharp 10 inch or 12 inch breaker knife is an absolute must when you're doing this because you're not gonna get through that steak with a small dull knife. It's just gonna ruin ruin your day for you. But the Dal Strong cuts right through it, no problem. And let's see what we get here. A little bit thinner one. Three nice thick ones, one little bit of a thinner one. I'm gonna cook up two of these today. I'm gonna freeze uh, two others. Once they're dried, you can vacuum seal them all over again and put them in the freezer to enjoy later. And then really what I wanna do here is save as much of that meat as possible. So I wanna really shave that dry age as close to that as I can. You can see that discoloration there and the nice pink there. That looks good to me. These, I think, just from the look and the feel, I can tell these are gonna be good steaks. What was our last one, 48 days? The uh, brisket that we did was 48 days. And then the last New York that I did uh, was 28 days. We didn't get that one on film. And when I did the brisket, I kind of mentioned it. That was actually, I think our second, second video that we'd ever done on the channel. Um, but I said that I'd come back and do a video on the dry age New York again uh, just took us a year to get to it. But here we are. I got the new Weber Master Touch grill, and I figured what better way to break that baby in than with a reverse sear dry age steak. So that's what we're doing. That looks good to me. That little bit there looks good. I'm gonna take that down just a little bit. So when you dry age these New Yorks, is that silver skin still a, a, an issue or? What, what yeah, you've up? got, on a New York strip, you've got a, uh, you've got that gristle strip that runs through the fat right there. And I, if this was a fresh steak, I would trim all that off. Um, the fact is, the shrinkage that you get from the dry age, I'm afraid we wouldn't have that much left. So I'm gonna keep that, I'm gonna keep that little fat cap on there. It'll grill up okay. And the, the, uh, the gristle's not offensive. Um, it'll break down, but I, I gotta have some steak left or we're just gonna end up with the, just this little teeny strip. And just take your time. It's uh, it's not a race. 
It's about preserving as much of that meat as possible, getting rid of the discoloration. It definitely looks a little bit easier to cut when you're just going through just the the side pellicle, pellicose. Pellicose? Pellicle Pellicle. Or pellicose? pellicle. I was uh, I was corrected by a viewer. I called it pellicose um, because the resource that I have used to learn about home dry aging has been Guga over on Subi Everything. I didn't learn the right way to pronounce it on Guga's channel, and I was corrected by a viewer and ended up looking it up. So pellicle uh, is, I believe, the uh, the correct pronunciation tell you what if anybody knows different or wants to agree uh, leave a comment tell me the right uh, pronunciation and spelling of that I'm so interested that, to see so definitely leave a comment I want to know that way uh, we don't look like fools up here I can cook it I just can't spell it or say it <laughs> I'm just gonna take that fat down just a little bit tighter there I like the look of that. Maybe just a little bit more right there. Square that up. I like the look of that. I like it a lot. That looks clean. So, we've got the Blackstone fired up. Uh, we're gonna we've got again two zone cooking these two burners on high this burner on low and the end burner off I'm just gonna let it come up to temperature and then I'm gonna start with rendering the bacon as soon as it's warmed up fired up I'll turn these down to medium medium low uh, to allow that bacon to render its fat and then really it's mise en pas right it's just a dump dish Put the bacon, add in the squash, add in the onions, add in the peppers, hit it with a little bit of John Henry's Texas pecan rub. Lots and lots of sugar, a little bit of smoke flavor in there. When Todd did his bacon fried squash, Todd Tobin, he added brown sugar. Didn't want to do that. Wanted to mix it up a little bit. I've used this on ribs many, many times. Very sweet. Um, and again, it's got all the rest of the stuff in it that we need. You could use whiskey burger. Uh, the Blackstone whiskey bur burger, I think would be really, really good. Or just uh, salt, pepper, garlic, and throw in a little brown sugar or uh, regular sugar if you wanted to try that. So let's get the Blackstone cleaned up and we'll get the bacon going. So now we're going to season the dry aged steaks. Before I do that, I did want to show you the fresh steaks that have been sous vide. Now I put these on at 129 for four hours and then we're going to sear them over charcoal when these uh, come up to temperature. But this will give you an idea, um, even though these are cooked, it's going to give you an idea of the shrinkage that happens with the dry age. These were cut from the same loin. So 
So look at the difference in the thickness. And when I say thickness, I'm talking from edge to edge. Look at the difference in the size of those steaks. So you lose a fair amount of, uh, of steak when that moisture comes out. But what you're picking up is more intense flavor, more tender meat, more complexity uh, in the flavor itself. And today we're gonna find out, is it worth it? Uh, is, it are you, is it worth waiting a month uh, to dry those steaks and get maybe 60% of the yield? Or are you better off just taking a fresh steak, cutting it up, putting it in the sous vide and then searing it in your, uh, in your method of choice? We're gonna find out. So for the seasoning today, we're doing the Militia Standby. Better than bullion, beef bullion as the base. A little bit of Kinder the Blend, salt, pepper, garlic, and a little bit of the Umai um, powder. This is the Umami powder. Again, this is a natural product. It's a dehydrated shiitake mushroom. The reason I like to do this, a uh, couple of reasons, but primarily we get a little bit of an MSG bump from the Better Than Bullion and the umami powder just takes everything in the steak to another level. These have the same seasoning minus the umami powder. So the, the meat militia standby. So we're just gonna take a little bit of paste. And for those of you that are thinking, why in the world did you spend the time to dry age just put all that seasoning on it. I see guys doing salt and pepper and wanting to be purists. I'm telling you, I like my steaks to taste good. This enhances the flavor of the steak. Uh, so, but certainly do whatever the heck you like. If you like salt and pepper, do salt and pepper. If you like your own uh, homemade rub, do that. If you like putting ketchup on your uh, steaks, quit, you know, unsubscribe. I don't want you watching my channel. So, <laughs> but, <laughs> But, uh, you know, it, it taste is subjective and personal. So do whatever you want. I'm not here to tell you that my way is better than anything else. Uh, this is the way I do it because this is the way that I like it and my family likes it. Unless you're putting ketchup on a steak. Unless you're putting ketchup on a steak or on a burger. Well, I do. Ketchup goes on burgers. Not for me. Uh, you watched last is month. It? Mayonnaise different? and mustard on burgers. Anything beef, mayonnaise, mustard, uh, seasoning. But for uh, french fries, I love ketchup on french fries. Um, I generally don't have ketchup on a, on a hot dog either. Is it ever a barbecue that's the ketchup guy? Barbecue? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, who, uh, Johnny, is it Johnny barbecue? Who? We did the... Um, we did the Bring On Summer 2021 collaboration and you had the ketchup. Shoot me a, shoot me a comment. I can't remember who it was that uh, we, we talked back and forth about ketchup, no ketchup. But uh, again, it's personal choice. Whatever you like, go with that. Well, whoever you are, I'm on the cat team ketchup, so. Kinder the blend, salt, pepper, granulated garlic. Doesn't get any more basic. Doesn't get any more perfect. Uh, if you are so inclined, you can do the individual components. What I found is that this is very high quality. Make sure you get all sides. Pick up what's on the board. Curious, do dry edge steaks cook any faster than not dry edge steaks? Or not that I've of... seen. I don't see a correlation that one cooks faster than the other. It's a good, good question though. It might be a good experiment. I, I, I don't know that I've... I'm gonna hit this with a little extra pepper. I mean, I know we've done dry edge before on the brisket and whatnot, and I don't think we really adjust at cook time, but if there's anybody else out there that knows anything about that, definitely let us know. I wonder, 
for me when it comes to a steak, I like a, I like uh, a lot of pepper. Beautiful. And some of our oh my. It always looked like fish food to me. Yeah. What was it that I said in the first one? It has a granular texture. Yeah. But uh, it is just dehydrated shiitake mushrooms. Adds the umami fifth sense. Um, and what I find, uh, and actually through a little bit of uh, through a little bit of research, it has a natural MSG. I, I was saying before that I thought it had uh, characteristics similar to MSG. It actually has natural MSG in it. Uh, so it elevates all of the other flavors. It elevates the salt, it elevates the pepper, it elevates the garlic, it elevates the beefiness. Uh, and then with the uh, Better Than Bullion, you get that little extra beefy punch. It's delicious. All right, so our grill is at 450. I'm gonna uh, put these on an indirect and then back down the vents and we'll let these go. Put these far away from the heat. The little bit of fat cap that's remaining, I'll put towards the fire. I'm gonna keep the vent about halfway. And then we'll check these every 20 minutes with my instant read thermometer when they get up to 129 internal we're going to pull them add some more charcoal let the fire get hot and sear all these steaks together all right so let's temp these one 119 121 those are ready i'm going to pull them right now I do not want those to overcook. I'm gonna set those right there for now. And I'm actually, instead of tending them with foil, I'll use my Blackstone Dome to keep those nice and warm. And then I will flip this open. And today, we're using the Kingsford Professional Competition Briquettes. Again, I know there's a whole group of people out there that swear by the lump charcoal. A couple of years ago, I was watching Myron Dixon. Uh, was the four-time grand champion at the uh, KC Masterpiece Barbecue Competition. He uses only Kingsford. Myron's a hero of mine. If it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. You use whatever you like. Now the moment we've all been waiting for. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison between the fresh sous vide steak 
and the dry age reverse sear steak. See which one we like better. So to start with, how's that for a medium rare baby? Dry age. This is the dry age. Perfect pink blush. Smells absolutely incredible. Now let's take a look at the sous vide. Now the sous vide, we know the temperature spot on, but sous vide takes a little while to bloom uh, because it's been cooked under vacuum. So the longer this sits on the board, the more pink that will become, but I promise you, it's a perfect medium rare. Oh my God, it's start, it's fall apart tender in the middle of that steak. Look at that. That's a piece I want to try right there. That's the piece I want to try right there. I'm gonna try the sous vide first. Wow. There's a reason why this is my everyday malicious steak. It's super simple, absolutely perfect, juicy, tender. That seasoning penetrates all the way through the meat with the sous vide. You pick up the salt, the garlic, everything. It's absolutely perfect. And now, the dry age. Is it worth it? Wow. It's absolutely ridiculous. Even more tender with a buttery quality to it. Uh, it has a completely different mouthfeel. The sous vide steak hovers somewhere in the in the land between the texture of a roast beef and the texture of a steak because I did it for four hours at 129. The dry aged steak is perfectly tender and juicy. Uh, I'm going to take a taste with that fat cap on it. And to answer your question, that little silver skin gristle strip is a non issue. It's perfect. Perfect. The umami has a um, a bite on your tongue. Kind of almost makes your tongue tickle, kind of tingle, uh, like pepper would. Let's see how our side dish turned out. Bacon fried squash on the Blackstone. Mmm, mmm. Holy cow. It's like dessert. It's that pecan rub, I was gonna say, it's full of sugar. So sweet, so good with a little spice kick from the pepper. I'm telling you, this is gonna be my new regular for Thanksgiving. This is fantastic. Perfect, perfect side dish to go with that steak. All right, guys. If this is your first time uh, visiting our channel, thank you so much. Uh, we absolutely appreciate you. If you like what you've seen, consider subscribing, giving us a thumbs up, and please leave a comment one way or the other. That's how we get better at what we do. Uh, if you're a regular, uh, thanks again. Uh, we, we appreciate you. Remember to share this video on your other social media outlets. That's how we get the word out and grow the Militia Nation. Until next time, get outside and cook.
snow, red sky, reach up for a soul so high.